All right, finish this phrase. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Don't say anything at all. <laughs> How many of us learned that when we were kids? I'd say most of us, yeah. Uh, so my friends, uh, I know a man named, I'll call him Tim. That's not his real name, but I'm not, I didn't get his permission to share this story. And since it's on the internet, I thought I'd give him a pseudo name. So my friend Tim owns a business. Um, and he used to have a small business that was his own. It was named after him. And it, it was consistently rated one of the best places in Cincinnati to work. Because Tim runs his company with biblical principles. You know, if you are having a hard time paying, he would give you grace and give you time. If, you, if he had an employee who wasn't working up to snuff, he didn't just arbitrarily fire them. He would work with them to try to get them to a place where they could stay. And even if they, he did have to fire them, he was still very like, you're a good person, you're just not a good fit for us. And he would do what he could to get them in a place that would be a good fit for them. He just was, he's just a really good man who tries to run his business in the most ethical way possible. So this, he's getting older, and he was kind of looking to retire, and he, in through the business world, met another firm that does a similar thing that he does, and they were like, we love your culture, and we want that where we are. So they, they bought him, and the, the goal was that they would buy him, and after whatever, five years, his cult, they, he would work to bring his culture to their business, and then he would retire. That was the plan. <laughs> he's still there. It's been more than five years. It's been a struggle. He, he was purchased by a family-run business. It was three brothers' cousins who owned, three or four brothers' cousins who owned it. Shortly after he came, one of them retired. They eventually had to fire one, and there was some legal stuff because they the guy just was not bringing the culture. He was not working in an ethical way, and they worked really hard to try to get him to be ethical, but it didn't work out, and they ended up firing him. Um, and now it's just my friend Tim and, and this other CEO working together. That's what's left. Well, the other CEO is a good guy, but he's not, he just doesn't want to deal with conflict. So if there's a problem, he just does nothing. He just lets it roll, you know? And, and, and Tim has been working to try to counsel him on how, like, how to do this. Tim also bought a business whose job it is to go into companies and, like, evaluate their culture. So they interview everybody, they see what's working, what's not, and then they go and they teach people, they, if the company chooses, they'll go in and teach people how to make it a good place to work. You know, like if they're, they don't deal with conflict well, they've got, you know, problems, whatever, and so they go and they do classes, they go and do things to help, pe help bring a better culture so that the company can stay solvent. So Tim understands what a good business is. I mean, it is literally his job to help businesses be good businesses. And, and so he tries so hard within his business to get the leadership, the other CEO, to do the things that need to be done so that Tim can step away. Tim wants to retire, but right now, if he retires, they'll go right back to what they were before. They, that he, w he came into the company, and those people he brought with him will now be stuck at working at a place that's not amazing to work. And so he keeps trying to counsel leaders and he you know someone needs to be fired they have meetings and all of this he does behind closed doors and so then middle management there's some people in middle management they're like he doesn't do a very good job and he we we brought him in here to change the culture and he's not changing the culture and they get all mad at him and he's like i'm trying so hard to do everything i know to do but if if the other leadership won't do it if no one will act on the recommendations i give like what am i supposed to do now tim could easily throw everybody under the bus and be like, well, I told him to do that. I, I tried to get them to do this. I've been, te I've been telling them, blah, 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 blah. Well, let me tell you what they said about this and that. But he doesn't. He just keeps quiet. He takes all the blame. Even though he is working super hard, he sees what needs to be fixed. And he is trying to get the other boss to do the fixing because he knows the other guy is going to be the one left behind when he retires. And it's really frustrating for him. He gets really worn out because he's working so hard. And he, he constantly gets thrown under the bus where he could easily shift the blame to who's actually to blame if he just told everybody what's actually happening. But he doesn't do that. Because he believes in the biblical principle of if you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything. 
So he allows himself to take the blame that he doesn't, he shouldn't have because he won't tell about what's really happening. You know, like I have cheerleaders at times and they're like, you are always yelling at me. You don't ever yell at anyone else. I'm like, I do. I just don't do it in front of everybody. So you don't know it. I pull them aside just like I'm pulling you aside. So you, they don't realize that I've, you don't realize I've, I've yelled at three other people, yelled at three other people today. You know, G- Tim tries to be like Jesus. I think about Jesus, when Jesus was hanging out with his dudes, and Jesus knew, I mean, Jesus met the woman at the well, and he just saw this woman for five minutes and knew she had been with like seven or eight different guys. But you never see Jesus hanging out with his dudes being like, oh man, let me tell you about the people I met today. You don't ever see him airing other people's dirty laundry in front of other people. You know, like... Zacchaeus had to promise to give back all the money he stole. So that means Zacchaeus stole money. And Jesus didn't go around and be like, let me tell you about Zacchaeus the thief. You know, Jesus saw the hearts of people. He saw the brokenness in people. He saw the jerkiness in people. But he never went around telling other people about that. You never hear a parable where he's telling the story of that person he just met and how terrible they are. Except the Pharisees, because they were like, we're so good. He's like, hmm, are you? <laughs> but usually that lesson was for them in their presence. You know, he didn't go behind their back and talk about them. We, as Americans, tend to hear something juicy, or get mad, or get frustrated, and, and we want to put it on social media. We want, to, we want to tell everybody about it. You know, we want to talk about how, what a jerk that person is, or whatever, like, I know as a, as a teacher, there have been times I had to stop eating in the teacher's lounge because all lunch is was, all lunch was that year was people wanted to complain about kids and parents and the leadership. And I was like, I just can't sit here and listen to this anymore. I can't take it. So what does the Bible say about how we're supposed to respond when we hear, when we get frustrated? How are we supposed to respond when someone's being a jerk? How are we supposed to respond when we hear juicy gossip? Okay, like... The Johnny Depp thing, or the Chris Rock and Will Smith thing, or Kardashian, or whatever. Like, we hear this news all the time. And and what is the first thing we want to do? We want to talk about it. We want to share it. We want to forward it. You know, we sit and watch that news article. Like, I stopped watching news because I just couldn't take all the, like, negativity all the time. So what does the Bible say? This is always my question to myself. Like, how should I act in different situations? Well, what does the Bible have to say about it? What is, last week we talked about evaluating the information coming in. So what does the Bible say about the information that I put out? Right? So the first one uh, is Philippians 4, 8 through 9. And I try to remember this a lot because it is easy in our American culture to talk about what a jerk somebody is or can you believe these people did that thing or oh my gosh, I heard on the news this terrible story of this awful person who did this terrible thing. But this is a letter, I, I, think, I can't remember if I quoted this one or another phrase from this letter. This, this letter that Paul writes basically starts off like, you guys thought I was nice the last time, but what I'm hearing, I'm going to have to come and, like, don't make me get out of this car. Like, this is a letter that Paul is chiding the Philippians because they are not doing their job, right? So obviously the Philippians were working for People Magazine, you know? <laughs> they, were, they were saying terrible things about people and gossiping constantly. And so Paul's like, listen, we talked about this. Don't make me come back to Philippi. You're not going to like it if I do, right? So he ends his letter with, finally, my brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if something is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. How many times, and I'm totally guilty of this, has someone done something jerky and you just stew on it? You just sit there like, I can't believe it. And you spend like days just like that jerk. And I can't, every time you think about that person, and you get all mad and you stew on it and you think about it and you can't wait to tell everybody what a jerk that person is. And Paul's saying here, no, 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 no. You're not even supposed to be thinking about that kind of stuff. Someone does some jerky thing and your job is to forgive them and move on. Your job is not to go around and tell everybody what a jerk that person is. You're supposed to meditate on, think about, and speak only the stuff that is good about that person. 
And it's hard when someone's a jerk. It's really hard when someone, especially consistently a jerk, it's really hard when they're consistently a jerk. You know, or it's really hard, like I find it really hard when I'm hanging out with friends and they're all complaining about kids or teachers or parents or whatever. And I, I'm like, oh, let me, t I got a story. I got a story that you're going to love. And I'm like, oh, I'm not supposed to say it. And so I'll just sit there being quiet, like, mm, I really want to contribute to this conversation, but I know I'm not supposed to. And then I feel like I just sit there like a bump on the log. <laughs> say. Like I think about this verse and I'm like, can anyone who's a Christian work for People Magazine? Because they don't say things that are noble or right or pure or lovely or admirable about people. I feel like all they ever do is talk about who's messing around with who and who's being rejected by who and who's having a fight and look at this terrible. We got a picture of this person leaving the gym and don't they look terrible? And But that is in our American culture. But the, the Bible says we're not supposed to have that kind of culture. We're supposed to be people who only think about, think about, and talk about the good stuff about people. And it's more than just Paul who says it. Um, oh, this is still Paul. So whatever you have learned or received or heard from me, put it into practice, and God is with you. So when we see and hear people who act in this way, and when we are people who act in this way, then the God of peace is with us. So if you don't feel at peace, Sometimes you need to kind of gut check and be like, have I done something that is making God be far away from me right now? Like if you're acting like a total jerk, if you're putting his kids down, sometimes you can be like, I'm going to hang out over here. You know, if you've ever had a kid who's had like a temper tantrum and you're like, I'm just going to let you, you just do your thing. I'm going to be over here when you're done <laughs> misbehaving. And then I'll, I, I love you. And when you come back to me, I'm here for you. But I'm not going to hang out with you if you're going to act like that. Or especially even adults. You're like, I'm not going to hang out with you if you're going to act like that. You know, sometimes I think God kind of gets that way. Like, I'm not going to hang out with you if you're going to act like that. Here's another one. Um, Ephesians 4.29. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it might benefit those who listen. So is what you're saying wholesome, and does it benefit those who listen? Because if what you're saying to and about people is not wholesome, and if it doesn't lift up those around you, then you shouldn't say it. You know, if you hear that someone was a jerk, and you go and tell your coworker, like, let me tell you what, and then they get all mad at that person too, you've, you've, you're not acting in accordance with the way the Lord would like you to. You're not benefiting. If, you're, if what news you give to somebody is only to make them angry or frustrated or think someone else is a jerk, then you're not benefiting them. Right? Then Now it gets even. James, James is a book. James is not pull punches. James, James tells you like the hard, he's, he's the hard truth guy in the Bible. The book of James is very like, this is the way it is. If you don't like it, tough. So James, this, that's why this message is like, whew. Um, those who consider themselves to be religious but don't keep a tight rein on their tongue deceives themselves, and religion is worthless. So James says, you can't keep, you can't stop from saying the bad things. You can't keep a, a rein on your tongue. Then you might as well sleep in on Sunday and keep your tithes because your religion is worthless. And I, you, I read that, I'm like, whew, ouch. But that's like the whole book of James. You kind of walk away going, whew. That's a stiff order. <laughs> but he's saying like, and he's saying if you've got a problem with somebody and you just want to tell everybody about it, if you want to just spread the negativity, don't go around telling people you're religious. It gets worthless because obviously you don't love Christ if all you want to do is go around telling everybody what a jerk his kids are. Here's another one. This one's a little easier. Proverbs is written by Solomon. So this is the book of wisdom. Um, a perverse person stirs up conflict, and gossip separates close friends. So Solomon, the wisest man supposedly in history, right? Like he went to the Lord, and the, and the Lord said, what do you want? I'll give you anything you want. And Solomon says, I want to be the smartest man in the world. So the smartest man in the world said, a perverse person stirs up conflict. Now I see this especially, in, it, this is not limited to teenagers, but you see it really easily as a teacher, in a classroom, 
You always have those couple kids who love to stir the pot. They love to poke the bear. They love to get someone all riled up so that someone else goes and gets in a fight or someone else gets all upset because then they sit back and watch it. And it's entertaining to them. I don't know if you've ever worked with someone like that. If you've ever worked with someone who's constantly stirring the pot. They're constantly trying to get people mad or upset. They're constantly trying to get people to like fight against each other and infighting and stuff like that. That The Lord calls that a perverse person. So when we stir up conflict, when we share conflict, when we talk about terrible things, and we like to spread the gossip about all that's happening, we now wear the label of perverse. I don't want that label on my business card. <laughs> I prefer not to have that label attached to me. But if that's the way you act, then that's the way the Lord sees you. With their mouths, the godless destroy their neighbors. With your mouth, you can destroy your neighbor. I had a, a friend years ago, she was a teacher too, and she had a student falsely accuse her of sexual misconduct. He said that she made sexual acts towards him. She did it. It was a bold-faced lie. It ruined her career. Even after she was exonerated, even after the trial, and she was found to be innocent, she was done. Because everyone had decided that that's what she was. Even though the courts found her to be innocent, and it was, they, they, made, they found that it was an absolute lie, her career was over. Because he had destroyed her. With just those words, he had destroyed her. And Jesus says to us on the Sermon on the Mount, another place where Jesus does not pull punches. He says, you've heard it said to the people long ago that you shall not murder, and anyone who murders is subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who says you fool is in danger of the fires of hell. So if we're sitting there calling someone a fool, telling everybody what a jerk somebody is, we are murdering their character. Just like that kid murdered my friend's career, he murdered her character. And, and she couldn't, even if she, she was like, I'm done, I'm not going to be a teacher, this is the way it is. But even had she wanted to get another job in teaching, it would have been really hard for her. Because even though she was found to be innocent, the, all the media coverage was about her trial. And, and it had lodged in her head, in people's heads, that that's what she was. And so when we go around calling people liars, calling people thieves, calling people lazy, calling people whatever label you put on them, when we do that, you are murdering their character. And the Lord says it, that's murder. That's just like if you took a gun and shot him in the head. To the Lord, that is the same. So if you just love, when you see, when you hear about something or see something that person did, and you just love going and telling everybody about what a jerk that person is or what a bad thing that person did again, you are murdering them. Now, does that mean you should not address conflict? No, you should address conflict. I love this. Uh, someone once gave a definition of gossip, and I loved it. It says, gossip is any negative talk to someone about someone else who is not part of the problem or the solution. So my, if I'm having a problem with Paula, and I go to Rob, I'm like, let me tell you what Paula did to me. Ah, oh, she, rah. And I'm just complaining about Paula. I'm gossiping. But if I go to Rob, I'm like, Rob, I'm really having this issue with Paula, and I don't know what to do. Can you give me some advice on how to handle it? Can you tell me if I'm doing this wrong, or if I should change my approach, or can, can I bounce off of you how I want to approach this conflict? Can you pray for me? Now he's a part of the solution and I can talk to him. But if I'm just going to tell him what a jerk Paula is today, that's gossip. And that makes me perverse. That makes me a fool. That puts me in danger of the fire of hell. No thank you. So we've got to think about how what we are putting out. Last week we talked about how, how we process what we put in. We need to be thinking about what are we putting out in the world. Are you the person who comes to the lunch to lunch and they love having you because you are funny and like you have encouraging things to say? Or are you the person who comes and everyone's like, oh, no, not that person again. All they do is complain. <laughs> oh, not that person. All they ever do is like gossip about people. And think about, also think about like, think about your social media. Those of you who use social media. 
There are algorithms that are measuring how long you spend watching stuff, what you click, what you share, what you like. And so the more you click, share, like, and watch the videos, the links about gossip, what jerk somebody is, this terrible thing that happened, that celebrity that Cellulite was showing, Johnny Depp's trial, Will Smith's, like, all that stuff. If you spend a lot of time watching and reading that stuff, Facebook's like, sweet, this is what they like. I'm going to give them more of it. So if you don't want to be a person who just spends time in the yuck, in the muck, then, then I encourage you, if you use social media, to find ways to, like, I have cultivated mine. Like those people who just get on there and put passive aggressive, passive aggressive statements or get super religious or super, like, political, I hide them. <laughs> you know? I intentionally spend time watching the puppy videos and the rescuing a whale video instead of what's happening with the Kardashians or somebody's trial. I have, in, I have intentionally liked, shared, clicked on inspirational videos and, and things, funny videos that are not bad against certain people. And so Facebook feeds me more of that. You know, the more that you click and like the good stuff, the more of that good stuff Facebook will give you. Same with YouTube, same with Instagram, Twitter, all of them. I say Facebook because that's what I think a lot of us are more likely to use, but they all do it. If you watch, if your YouTube watching is all like gossip and, and like People Magazine-y kind of Jerry Springer-y kind of stuff, it'll give you more of that. But if your YouTube is like worship videos or testimonies of good stuff or even D, like mine's DIY, I get a lot of like Derek Prince videos because I love Derek Prince, like it'll start to give you more of that. So start, yeah, last week we talked about filtering what comes in. This week, my challenge to you is filter what comes out. Are you a person that sheds light? Are you a person who talks about and, and ruminates on what is wholesome and pure and lovely? Or are you a person who, who just stews on the ugly? Are you a person who loves to talk about what terrible thing that person did recently? Because if you did, then, then you're kind of getting yourself like God doesn't like that. And he's, he's not going to be favorably disposed to you if you do that. He loves you, and he will gladly take you. I'm not saying, like, that he will leave you, but he does not like it because now you're talking crap about his kid. Because as much as that person is a jerk, they might be doing a totally jerky thing. But they're still God's little jerk. They're still his child. Even if they you don't like them and you don't like what they do and you think they have no redeeming qualities. I have had times when I'm like, that person does not have a single redeeming quality. I know that's awful to say, but I have a hard time finding it. But Jesus put redeeming qualities in that person. And Jesus loves that person. So if you're running around telling everybody what a jerk they are, you're running around telling everybody what Jesus' kid is. And those of you who have had your own children know that Mama Bear comes out. You talk smack about someone's kid, and Mama Bear comes out. So don't be on the devouring end of Jesus' Mama Bear by talking smack about his kids. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. All right, we have a board meeting this Tuesday.